Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, Flo Dominica launches bigger, bolder, better prepaid mobile plans. Government contemplates funding Marigot Hospital alone as funds purged by Mexico continue to be delayed. The Minister for Family Affairs wants maximum punishment for those guilty of crimes against children. The details of the news coming up. Imagine. You have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flo. Leading telecommunications service provider Flo Dominica has continued to revolutionize the country's telecoms market. Here's Andrea Louis with our report. This as the telecoms giant rolled out its new suite of prepaid data plans during an official media launching on Friday. The plan dubbed the Always On Prepaid Plans caters to every category of Flow customer and helps create better connections among users which help in the making and sharing of moments. Acting General Manager of Flow Dominica, Lauren Mitchell, says the company remains committed to being the game changer in the industry. We're going to give our customers anywhere minutes that would allow them to call friends and family on any network. A flow-to-flow flow fixed line call, flow to any other provider in the market, or flow-to-flow to, to flow mobile. Snapchat, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter messaging is going to be free to all our flow customers. We are changing the game in the market. We will no longer be talking about megabytes. Customers are going to get used to having more data without giving customers gigabytes. Mitchell says the new plans are a result of the company taking customers' concerns into consideration and catering to their needs. We've listened to our customers. One of the things that customers have gotten used to, especially in our case, is a lot of data post Hurricane Maria. Right? So we, re we realize that there is a growing need for, for data. It's what customers use to communicate, and so we made the decision to give customers what they've been asking for. So apart from being moment makers in markets, we can boast of our brand being the most innovative brand in the market. We were the first to bring 4G LTE to Dominica. We were the first and only provider in market to offer a state-of-the-art IPTV network. And today, we're going to be the first to give customers value as they've never seen before. The acting general manager says Flo Dominica is steadfast in its stance to give its customers more value for money. Our entry-level plan, one-day plan, is now going to be contain one gigabyte of data. Previously on the entry level plan, customers got 75 megs of data. Our always on three day plan, customer will get one gigabyte of data. All of their social media messaging features will be free. The plan is valid for three days for only $12. Our always on seven day plan, is three gigabytes of data. All of your social messaging, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, hence the acronym SWIFT, 
is only $27. And our always on 30 day plan for the customers who don't want the hassle of recharging or activating a plan every week and who do a monthly plan, who subscribe to a monthly plan. They actually get 10 gigs of data. So we are moving from 1.5 gigs of data, which is what existed on the older plans, to 10 gigs of data for the same price. In, and that also includes your social media messaging free. The always on prepaid plans came into effect on Friday, 5th April. Postpaid customers have been assured that innovative plans are on the cards for them also. The Minister for Health has expressed concern about the delay involved in getting the Marigot Hospital project off the ground. Government has received heavy criticism and there have also been protests calling for the authorities to get on with the construction of the hospital. But the Minister for Health says there is much more to these arrangements than the public is aware of. The issues of, of, of um, procedure and, and, and the number of things that we have had, we have had to do. I mean, I mean, every other week, okay, some new document is, signed, is sent to us to be signed. We sign it. I'm hoping that everything is okay then. I mean, I see Mrs. Popo laughing, okay? I mean, I'm speaking the truth of people and nothing but the truth, you know? Just sometimes, just when you feel that, hey, we are about to just, you know, start and things about to roll, we, we get an email saying, you know, you guys, uh, you guys um, have, to, have, to, have to provide this. You haven't provided this information. Yes, but we provided that 10 years ago. You, you understand me? So myself as a minister, look, you're looking at a very frustrated minister of health as it pertains to that particular project. And, and I'm being honest, I really cannot find better ways to say it. Um, and in fact, um, our last week, some um, cabinet discussion, I, I have told the cabinet of Dominica, my cabinet colleagues, quite frankly, that I think we've reached a point where we really have to take some serious decisions. Uh, that whether we, we continue to wait on, 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 on the follies or whatever it is that the UNOPS and or the Mexican government is doing, or we, or we begin, or we begin, or we do the construction use, using local funds. Because um, so, wait left to me entirely to me. I would have told the people and them thank you a long time ago, thanks for the offer and moved on. But we have to understand that there are also um, other um, other things to consider issue of um, foreign diplomacy. While the five million U.S. dollars promised by the Mexican government have, has not materialized. The minister insists government has done its part. We did what we had to do from our end. In fact, um, I think for three years in running now, we'd have a million dollars on the budget towards um, government's um, counterpart funding towards the project. In fact, we used some of this towards um, clearing up the site. And again, even this, I mean, I think the PS was wrong at the time or who was wrong. I felt very uncomfortable because one of the things that they stipulated, yes, they did stipulate to us in the whatever the arrangement, the agreement that we have to clear this side because before they can even consider giving us the money. I mean, I'm seeing and hearing things from that project that honestly in my tenure of politics I've never even heard before. But I was waiting, we cleared it, but I was very uncomfortable because it felt like at the time that going to clear this side right now, we're talking about a year plus ago, and I never felt comfortable in clearing this side. And you see Mrs. Popo shaking her head, you know, because I, I, I felt that if you clear in the side, that construction should begin, you know, very soon after. And I really didn't want it to appear that we were just giving the people false hopes, you know, or trying to, to fool the people and per se. But that's the way, and as I said, that's just the pure, the pure truth, that, 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 is, that is what's going on in Marigot. So, as I said, we are at the junction now where cabinet now has to consider the way forward for Marigot. I have asked the peers to make a final um, attempt to get in touch with our friends at UNOPS. By the way, UNOPS is the United Nations Office of Project Services who has been contracted to to, to, to manage the project, to give the designs, etc. Make a final attempt to them. Let's see what they say. And then whatever response will be, will be to the chairman of cabinet for, for consideration. But from where I sit, I really think the time has come where we, can, we should say that, hey, um, thanks for your offer, but I mean, um, how much longer? Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Social Services has spoken to concerns expressed by the Dominican Nurses Association over Cuban or Spanish-speaking nurses in the health system. The DNA President Rosie Felix says these Spanish-speaking nurses in the health healthcare system creates a language barrier between them and patients which could have disastrous consequences. This was among issues highlighted by the DNA which spent several days protesting last week. P.S. in Health, Letitia Lestrade Wyke addressed uh, aspects of that concern at Friday's news conference. At present, we have 20 nurses from the Cuban Technical Corporation, 
we still expect seven more from the Cuban Technical Corporation. The issue we have is housing. After Maria, we had a lot of damage to, the, to houses, so housing is one of our major issues. These nurses have been assigned to districts and some to the maternity unit, operating theater, and on the main wards. You may hear a person say that, oh, we have people from Cuba and they cannot speak English and they cannot. Any one of us, even those of our nurses who are migrating, you have to have a period for you to adjust to the different way of living. And I must extend thanks to the Cuban government and the embassy of Cuba, especially Dr. Lopez, for all her efforts. We we'll call on Dr. Lopez now, and we have a need, and Dr. Lopez gets right to it and try to assist us. And I, as, a, as the PS, and I speak on behalf of Ministry of Health, we appreciate those persons, because to leave your home and your family behind and to come to another country two years, it's not an easy thing, and I think it's because of the support, and they consider us very dear um, to their heart. So I need to say thank you as the Permanent Secretary on, the, on behalf of the Ministry of Health. And the Minister for Family and Gender Affairs has expressed a desire to see stiffer penalties for those who break the law with regard to child protection. She believes too often the courts are too lenient on some of those cases involving the well-being of the country's children. It is her position that stiffer penalties could serve as a deterrent. A number of harmonized family bills are currently being processed for enactment. With these pieces of legislation already before cabinet, the minister says government is much closer now to enactment. She says the new legislation will give magistrates and judges greater latitude in making certain care and protection orders which the court will be authorized to make. Sometimes you make those bills and they have sentences and you go to court and I, I have a problem with the court system where more often they take the lower end of the yes, sentencing for the person. So it's like a slap on the wrist. And I think it's time we start giving maximum sentence to certain crimes, which would be a deterrent to whatever. The law is the law. And if we want things changed, we have to send a message. A little thing in the corner, you slap a hand, let me give you the little sentence so I'm sending you. Something I can't understand with law. Um, I always have a problem with that. You're an attorney that when somebody commits a crime and they go to the court, they say that's a first offense. It's as though they say, go and try more, and you, when you come back, we'll see how hard it can be. To me, maybe I'd have been, if I was a lawyer, I'd be a harsh one in court, because from the time you come for the first time, you get the maximum, so it has to be a deterrent, rather than something to go and practice more and come back, and you'll get it as it progresses. I think we have to be more stringent in our laws and enforcement of the laws. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. Imagine, you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Nani Sing to Patou, attention si vous êtes nom et befan. Visitez place santé pour examiner kou. Sa se an nik pou yo wè si la ni pièce moun o li moun ki ni maladi TB et ben maladi sexua. An kopani moun ki ni maladi HIV pe ni TB aussi. Sav ki, la ni jerizon pou TB. Ou sa viv an bon santé même si ou ni maladi HIV. Pale bay dokte ou, pon responsabilite ou. Ede dou bout si me maladi TB et HIV. Ou aje tout moun pou examiner kou yo. Minister for Health and Social Services Dr. Kenneth Daru has addressed concerns over the status of uh, ENT specialist Dr. Irvin Pascal and Dr. Hissel Schillingford Ricketts. There has been controversy in the local media as to whether government would engage their services beyond their retirement. He says there is a process established by law in the public service regulations which speaks to how a retired individual can be re-engaged. The minister addressed the issue during a news conference on Friday. In order for you to be re-engaged or brought back, on, whether it's on a contractual basis or otherwise, you first have to be officially and legally resigned. Right or correct? Retired, sorry, retired. 
So when your retirement, you reach your retirement age, I think the, the process, the establishment, the vision, the right to you, you now have to write back to now say, okay, yes, you acknowledge whatever package, I think right now in recent times we have different options available, etc. But unless you have written back to the establishment division, accepting your retirement, you, are, you cannot be considered, and you don't have to go to the Public Service Commission, and then you are officially and legally retired. So in other words, it's illegal to rehire somebody, if there's on a contractual basis or any other terms, unless they have officially and legally retired from the system. All parties concerned are pretty well aware they are long, they were long-standing members of the um, sorry, um, public servants and they were, they were well aware of the procedure involved. So now that they have, as Dr. Deschamps indicated, they have done what they had to do to be officially and legally um, retired, sorry, that, um, that we can now begin the discussion. And, and I mean, I think the process is already advanced because they would have already submitted proposals um, to the to the Ministry of Health for, for re-engagement. I think some of the statements that were made out there were bothered and deception, very deceitful. Because I think it, 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 it was playing, um, they were playing on the public emotions. Because both these, both these individuals know that the Ministry of Health and the government would have no problem in engaging them. Because the services are still needed. So while we welcome the, the, um, the, the services that are being offered by our um, Chinese counterparts in the case of ophthalmology and I think uh, Cuban in the case of ENT. The experience and of course the local knowledge okay, of these two esteemed and, and long serving um, doctors will, are still needed. Over 75% of Dominica's damaged greenhouses have been restored as efforts continue to augment vegetable production here. Director of Agriculture Ricky Bruman says assistance from various entities was crucial in restoring vegetable cultivation through greenhouse farming. Based on our data, we had 207 greenhouses. Um, quite a bit of that was damaged, but we have restored up to 75%, uh, Mr. Chair, 75% with support to, from Samaritan Purse. Um, we would have gotten um, 50 new ones from Samaritan Purse, um, 18 from the Chinese Mission, and we would have given support to 100 farmers um, for um, greenhouse plastic, um, bird netting, sarin netting, and drip lines. So we will have covered um, the balance of the 25% when this project is roll, rolled over into the new, the new year. The director pointed out, though, that uh, due to the effects of uh, climate change, water harvesting mechanisms need to be developed to assist greenhouse farmers. One of the, the, the serious mitigating factors for us in, in vegetables in particular is the issue of climate change. And, and it, it, rains and, and, and the availability of waters, water, sorry, um, um, where that, that happens. And so our intention is to ensure that all the greenhouse farmers we are supporting to ensure that um, um, we can provide a measure of water harvesting, harvesting capacity for them, including water tanks. And as we speak, we have a container of um, 400 drums um, on the pot that we will give to these farmers, supported by FAO. So we will continue to expand in this regard. Bruman says the ministry has uh, other projects on the cards to increase vegetable production and consumption in Dominica. Part of the vegetable production is to increase local consumption of, of vegetables at the homes. And, and so we have a, a component for backyards. We, we're looking at a, a vegetable backyard competition that we're going to unroll from June. Um, we have already started to work on that. We, in conjunction with our other agencies, so the Environment, Health, Health Ministry of Health, and the Community Development, we're going to do that. And of course, our school vegetable program. And so um, we have seen, we have seen, sorry, some time last year, the presence of shredded vegetables particularly by ESMAD. We will continue ensuring that, that people can get ready available vegetables already shredded, already chopped, and, and can easily consume. And another attempt to revive and sustain the steel pan culture here will get underway next month. We go back now to Andrea Louis for more. This as renowned Trinidadian panist Johan Chakari will hold a master class with local steel pan players on the first weekend in May. Chakari is one of the main stage acts for this year's Jazz and Creole Festival, scheduled for Sunday, 5th May. 
Project officer in the Discover Dominica Authority, Daphne Vidal, says the steel pan players here will have a chance to benefit from Chukari's knowledge and expertise during his visit to Dominica. This year, Johan Chukari will be doing the masterclass sessions with our young pa panis on the 3rd of May. Yes, on the 3rd of May. So we are working with the PAN groups and the Dominica Institute for Fine Arts to organize that masterclass session for PANIS with Johan Chokery. Johan Chokery has is the award-winning member of the Petro Trin Phase 5 PAN Group Steel Orchestra in Trinidad. He has also composed musical arrangements um, for the marionettes choral, he has worked with Len Brooks, C Sharp, and David Rudder. Vidal says the masterclass will complement the ongoing tutorials organized and hosted by the Division of Culture to boost the steel pan culture in the country. And I know that we are trying in Dominica to develop our steel pan um, music that is part of our heritage. And through the Old Mill Cultural Center, they are also trying to develop steel pan through the youth. So that is also a good way of getting the youth excited about steel pan music and not just the youth, but getting us excited about steel pan music and embracing our cultural identity. Earlier this year, a contingent of steel pan players from St. Lucia was on island for Mass Dominique 2019, and according to cultural icon Alwyn Bully, an ensemble of steel pans and a group of panists from Renegade Steel Band in Trinidad are expected in the country later this year to help inject new life into the steel pan culture. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. And the Family Affairs Minister says there are a number of problems to be addressed with respect to the issue of adoption. She is calling on those responsible for adoptions to place the welfare of the child above all else. We have, and even people who are supposed to be the agents for ensuring that it's done, they, they compromise their standards for a little change. I think today we are facing where there's another country who wants to, you know, they have stopped our adoption coming to that country because some things, some paperwork is not done properly. But the people we expect to do it, they violate it themselves. So even as we train our people, I think it must hit home that you, your first course of business is the protection of the child. Addressing a three-day training workshop for child protection practitioners, which ended on Friday, the minister said discussions were already underway for the establishment of a probation unit. We have already made provisions of probation officer. We'll start off there, very small, and then expand. Because with the enactment of the laws, it calls for a lot of um, infrastructural things to be in place. Different homes for juveniles, reform schools, and then you cannot, you, you want to work concomitantly with what, for it to be effective. So you put the officers in place, you pass the laws, but you also have, you know, where it can be enacted, that the, the systems are there. The minister says government is grateful for UNICEF's partnership over the years. UNICEF sponsored this week's training on child protection. Imagine, you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Rip jeans, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Here are some tips to reduce mosquito presence in and around your home. Keep water storage containers properly covered. Remove containers that can collect water from your surroundings. Keep garbage bins tightly covered. Pick up your litter and remove all tires from your yard. Keep gutters free of leaves and twigs to prevent stagnant water. Prevent Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya. Fight the bite! This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. This message is supported by Flow. 
To end the news, a look again at the headlines. Flo Dominica launches bigger, bolder, better prepaid mobile plans. Government contemplates funding Marigot Hospital alone as funds pledged by Mexico continue to be delayed. And the Minister for Family Affairs wants maximum punishment for those guilty of crimes against children. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You may access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend.